So aside from selling antiques and collectibles, we also sell motorcycles here at the shop. So uh, we have a few in stock right now, there's some over here too. So I thought I'd take a minute uh, as we talked about a lot of other things we have in the shop, but I haven't spent a lot of time talking about the motorcycles. So today I'm going to walk through some of the bikes that I've got in the store and some of their features and yeah, I'll just show you some cool stuff. So stay tuned and let's have a look. So the first bike I'm going to show you is a 1952 AJS, and AJS stands for AJ Stevens. They later got bought out by Matchless, uh, which became Norton Matchless, and of course um, Norton most people have heard of. That's actually a 70, 1970 Norton 750 Commando sitting right behind it there. Um, what's cool about this, uh, this bike, this AJS, well first off it's styling, it has this really cool, um, almost Art Deco inspired look to it. And if we look at the engine and some of the details, just really nice chrome work and detail. This one's a 500 single. So one piston, 500 cc's, and just a gorgeous looking machine. Again, this one dates to 1952. Um, the seat that's on this bike, you could have ordered it with either just a single saddle or this dual seat, which this one has. This is factory correct, uh, partial restoration on this bike. But um, kind of a rare piece that you don't see around uh, too, too often. Um, again, here is the 70 Norton 750 Commando. Um, this one was owned by the same guy for like the last 25 years or so. He had the engine rebuilt and it was uh, taxed and ready for the road up until this year. So um, overall really good condition, uh, generally very original and I uh, just had this one uh, tuned up not that long ago so it's running nice. Um, sitting next to it over here, that is a, a 1963 Triumph and uh, this is a 600cc. Uh, this is the first year unit engine. What unit means is that basically um, in the older models they would have had a separate engine and separate transmission. This year it was combined so it's a first year unit engine. So pretty cool uh, piece of motoring history. And these early Triumphs, what was kind of neat about them, you can see it's the original seat on there with the Triumph logo. And on occasion, I like to put old magazines that show the motorcycle that I'm selling there. So that's actually a motorcycle showing this cool, awesome bike when it was brand new. Um, so we've got the original owner's manual here as well. And uh, yeah, the early bikes had this rack where you could strap stuff to that were on the gas tank. So really cool piece. Uh, what I like most about this 63 Triumph is that uh, it has more of a dashboard style uh, headlight. And now oftentimes you see them and they're separate, kind of like the Norton there. Um, but this one actually is integrated and very streamlined and cool. It's got the black gauges, black dial, and um, yeah, this bike should be pretty well just ready to go right now when somebody picks it up. <coughs> and the horn still works, and the lights are still working, so my battery's still good. So really, as much as it's sitting here in the shop, um, it's ready to go. So, and summer's just around the corner, so that'll be a great bike for someone. The other one I have in, now this bike is a 68 Triumph uh, T100S, it's a 500cc Tiger. Um, this black one here, a very cool bike. Um, now when I got it, this bike admittedly was painted, it was in good shape, but it was painted metallic purple and it did not look great. So I had the tank repainted black and gold, which is a little bit more of the uh, 1960, earlier 60s style, but I think it suits this bike. Um, the seat, somebody has customized at one time and they've actually notched it down a little bit. That's what they call a king and queen seat. Um, it's the original pan. I'm leaving it for now. Uh, I'll let the next person worry about what they want to do. But we just did new tires on this bike. Uh, 500cc is definitely a great bike for around town. And these do have more than enough power to drive around on the highway as well too. But um, Yeah, so this one just did uh, some tune up and some work on that. But I really like the black and gold combination. I think it actually set it off really nice. Uh, the bike that's sitting next to it here, that's a 52 Triumph TRW. It's a very early uh, Canadian military bike, so it was developed during the war, and uh, of course the war ended, and uh, these were used uh, into the Korean War kind of era, but uh, this one's a Canadian bike. It would have been a, a bike that was used around the bases to uh, shuttle or courier messages around. It has the original um, base uh, or the inventory number from the Canadian military still stamped on it. This bike is really cool because it only has 1,052 original miles. These are even the original Dunlop Universal tires with tubes and they're still holding air just fine. What was really neat about this bike is that uh, inside the panniers here, inside the bags, were the original military driving gloves and helmet. 
So this is really a time capsule piece, and uh, this one is uh, what they call a unit engine. So I was talking about before, this one has the engine separate from the transmission. So this is um, a pre-unit bike. So yeah, a little bit earlier, but very cool. And that's the original paint on this bike. I'll show you just how nice the gauges are on it. So 1,052 original miles. So very cool. Um, the little guy sitting next to it there, that's a Moto Perilla. It's an Italian 50cc moped that's a factory cafe racer. It's kind of hidden away back there. Um, that bike actually sold to a fellow in, I believe he's in California, uh, so I'm just waiting for him to come pick it up. But um, I'd never seen another one, and I may ne never see another one again. But uh, I like the strange and the unusual here at the shop. So generally my motto is, if it's cool and unusual and I haven't seen it a whole lot before, I'll try and bring it into the store. Um, so I like things that are generally in pretty good condition so I don't have to do a lot of restoration work to them. Uh, I, I like to uh, help it find a good home without too much work or effort. Uh, and I'll show you the last two bikes that I got in here. They're pretty neat. Um, the first one here, uh, let's walk over to it so you can see. This is a 1946 Wizard. It's based on a Monarch chassis. So what you would do basically, if you had a really fancy bicycle back in the 40s and you wanted to add a motor to it, you could uh, buy the Wizard kit and put it on anything. A lot of people are familiar with the Schwinns. Uh, Schwinn was a common bicycle that uh, you would have converted. Um, this one is was a Monarch, which was an equally fancy bike with Springer front end. Um, I'll point out some of the cool things on this bike. So wide white wall tires, um, it's got the headlight on the fender, it's got another headlight up there, it's got the Springer front suspension, it's got tassels off the handlebars, it's got a jeweled reflected uh, mirror for the side there. Um, it's got a really cool looking sprung seat with a little handle rack on the back, um, very nice little rear rack, uh, very an Art Deco 30 sort of look. Beautiful studded saddlebags. And um, this bike had been restored probably 20, 30 years ago and was sitting in a gentleman's collection. And like I said, I uh, actually found this bike in a shed. So we walked onto his property. Um, he said he had this wizard and a couple other neat, interesting old bikes. Uh, was not expecting to see this one so cool and I definitely couldn't pass it up. So super cool old bike. And um, I'm sure that'll make somebody really happy. What a great piece to have on display or to even ride around. So really, really neat piece. And lastly, uh, so I've got other bikes that aren't in the shop here right now, but uh, this is the last one I've got in. This guy is a 1968 Triumph TR6R. Um, now somebody has uh, optimistically put the Bonneville uh, decal on the side there. This isn't actually a Bonneville, but what they did do, uh, and I understand why they did it, um, they spent a lot of money back in the 70s customizing this bike and making it into a showpiece. Uh, a lot of extra chrome, uh, a lot of, I mean, all the bright work is just fantastic on this bike. Um, but the big thing that they did is they put the Bonneville head on it. So it, it has the Bonneville head converted. Um, so it will actually um, be a little bit higher performance like the Bonneville was. So that would mean that it went from being a factory single carb bike to now uh, having two carburetors on it, just like the Bonneville. And you can see all like the, the valve covers and everything are all nicely polished and chromed. Um, just a fantastic looking old bike. And um, this guy runs fantastic, so it's a really neat piece. So now that summer's here, I'm sure these bikes are gonna start walking out the door, or riding out the door, that is. Um, I've also got a 52 BSA M21, which is a cool 600cc single, uh, an old 52 BMW, and a couple other bikes too, so. Um, they're always kind of coming and going. Um, the store has definitely been filling up a little bit more with the antiques versus the motorcycles lately, so. Um, yeah, I, I love them. I've been riding almost my whole life since I was about seven years old, so. Love to get out there on the road. If you like old bikes too, then um, you know, we're in the same boat. Uh, if you like these little videos that we're putting together, you can subscribe to us on YouTube. I'm trying to put these out uh, every uh, week or so, something different. Um, but yeah, I love history, I love antiques, love old motorcycles. You can check us out on our website too, which is curiosityedmonton.ca. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching and uh, take care guys, bye for now.